Hi, and welcome to the blending class here at Homies World. And this lesson is going to be on the dissolve blending mode. Now I'm going to take each of these blending modes in order and um, go right down the list. And dissolve happens to be the first one, and it's my least favorite. Um, you can do the least with it. I hardly ever use it. So it's not a real fun one to start with, but bear with me. Um, you can do some fun things with it, and it is only bound by your imagination. So here we are. I've got uh, this um, file, and we're going to start every lesson with this file and um, show you what the blending mode does to kind of teach you. And the dissolve blending mode is random. That's about all you have to remember. A lot of the blending modes have to be with, do with all about the math. And um, this uh, particular blending mode has nothing to do with the math. It's totally random. But there's one thing that you need to remember in, a, in order to make this blending mode effective. So let's learn what that one thing is. So here we have our um, three blocks, black, white, and uh, about 50%, and uh, our uh, gradient from black to white. Um, that way we can observe how uh, it affects and blends into this green background I have going on. Um, for the blending mode, which I'm going to go of dissolve, I'm going to go ahead and set it to that. Um, you're going to see it's very random. Now in the beginning you see that and not I'm sorry dissolve now in the beginning where is it oh there they are I couldn't see it at first you see it is randomly blended in and chosen some of the top layer and some of the bottom layer just totally random and it only has a few on either edge if we go over here to this edge there's some too uh, just random and you think well what in the world is this doing the trick with the dissolve blending mode is that you have to lower the opacity. And the more you lower the opacity, the more random pixels it chooses. And so we're going to lower the opacity. And as you do, it seems like we get more of a uh, snow effect. It, well, especially on the white side where it's snow. and um, this kind of reminds me of in the old movies as one screen dissolved into another screen. And I think that's why uh, they use this name. And so as I get and I lower my opacity more and more, it changes and changes. And um, in the middle here, uh, we're not seeing anything. So those uh, grayscale pixels uh, won't be doing much at all. So if you have a texture that has a lot of uh, ver uh, variance from black to white, uh, the grayscale ones will be really uh, disappear first. And then you just kind of keep going. And this here even looks a little bit like it's snowing outside. So a lot of times that's where uh, people will use this is to get a snow kind of effect. Which leads me um, to uh, the texture that I've given you to download today and why I gave you this particular texture. Here's my image that I made. And as I said, I don't like this blending mode a whole lot, so I had struggled a little bit with it. Um, but this is my final image. And uh, this is the paper I'm giving you. And you see that. It, you know, it's got some fun textures on it. You may be able to play with it in um, other uh, ways. But um, I gave it to you in all white so that if you want to try to make some snow effects on your layers rather than the black, 
you could do so. If you want to take this paper, I have this paper layer as the active layer, and just hit Control I, it kind of turns to this, and um, you can use it uh, more, you know, with uh, to get the black, the dark colors. But I like it working with the white a little bit better. Um, so. I actually, here is, let's deconstruct what I did. Here's my photo, and um, actually I tried playing with my photo just as it was, and I want everybody in the class to use the same texture. That way we can see and learn um, how to get various effects with nothing else but a picture and um, the same texture and if you want to give your recipe or what you did when you share your photo uh, that in the forum or in Flickr or wherever you're sharing with us um, please do uh, that way we all learn and I really only wanted you to use the one blending mode and if you can do that stick with that but for me, I ended up taking this same paper and I changed it to linear burn and look at what it did to my photo. And I took this same paper and I did it again to linear burn and I loved what it did. I love the kind of mystic, grungy, saturated color it gave it. And so I am working with that, but then I still needed to use the dissolve mode. And so I tried several things, and I want to show you. Here's my text, and um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just reconstruct it with this uh, new paper here. And we're going to put it on the dissolve blending mode. And you see it did absolutely nothing. But when I begin lowering my opacity, I get, well, that looks pretty, pretty wild there but you can't really see the photo so you have to keep going down and down and down and now it looks like it snowed in the summer so unless you have a you know less green brown out there it's not going to look very realistic because it doesn't snow in the summer you know the grass dies so I couldn't really use it with this photo and then I thought well what I want it to do is um, maybe not have any uh, of this speckles. <laughs> I guess the, the dissolve mode can be thought of as speckles on the bridge because the bridge goes with my saying. And so I added a blending mask and I went to the gradient layer. I chose uh, bl uh, this uh, black to white and I just did it like this and I thought well that looks better I can handle that and I want you to check out what it does to the green so it kind of uh, made a neat texture on the, the solid green of the tag and I thought well I could go with that kind of like your past is all the saying says uh, when your past calls don't answer it has nothing new to say so we're crossing the bridge into our past I'm imagining and the past has nothing new to say back here we're gonna kind of wipe it out that was kind of my thought and um, you know that looks good I could have I could have done with that but uh, then I decided to uh, play um, some more. So I went ahead and made my mask uh, all black again. And um, I, uh, what did I do? I hold, held down my control key and selected this shape. And I went to select, modify, and expand and I expanded it 50 so my shape is beyond that 50 and then I just hit the uh, control key and backspace to fill this uh, selection control D to deselect now um, I went ahead and I played with it I said well what if I just wanted to put it on this shape so I can bring it down to the layer above this shape uh, hold my alt key 
and move my mouse right between the layers until I get this down arrow to group those layers and say only apply it to that. And I thought, well, I could do that, but that's not very artistic. I mean, and, and actually, you know, if I would do control I and invert it and then lower it some more, you know, it just makes that grungy. <coughs> I could have done something like that, but, um, I didn't really like it. And then I said, well, what happens if I, I'm going to ungroup it from that and move it up to my, right above my text layer. And I held my Alt key down and grouped those two layers. And you're going to see then it made some cool grungy text. And I thought, well, I kind of like that. It almost makes it look like glitter text. And these are things I'm showing you so that you can see ways that you can use the dissolve. It, it does have some purposes um, to it uh, because um, it does kind of grunge things up. And if you can get it just right and use it with just the right things, um, it is pretty cool. And so then I thought, well, you know, but I want to show the students how to use it with the photo, not just with the text or the text box. And so I undid that. And um, I in and then I then I think I put it below. And I said, well, that's kind of cool. It gives me um, a grungy kind of effect on the photo, uh, kind of like uh, the glow does, a glow layer style, but kind of faded out and to kind of set off the um, text box. I thought, well, I could do that. That's pretty good. But then I just kept playing and I, you know, you can never recreate exactly what you did before. So I'm just going to show you the layer I ended up going with. I ended up just um, applying the gradient to my mask. This is my mask. If you hold down the Alt key and click on your mask, you can see what the mask looks like. So this is my random gradient on my mask. And uh, it came out to be like this, and it goes across, and it covers more of the area. And I thought, OK, stop. I think that looks good. I, I kind of like the way that looks um, more than any other other things I had played with. But this kind of shows you uh, how you can play with the Dissolve blending mode and how you can apply it to different things to get different results. And so I, even though this is the least fun <laughs> to me <laughs> of the blending modes, I want you to get out there and play. And remember to only use your photo. And of course, if you want to add text boxes and text, that's OK. But only use your photo and this one uh, uh, texture that I'm giving you to download. It's going to be on the guide on the website. And I'm anxious to get everybody playing and see what they do. And I'll see you around for the next lesson.